In this video, we're going to continue our study of section 6.1 of our text by taking a look at the complement rule and doing some complex counting problems practice. I want to start by looking at the complement rule or the opposite problem. And this is actually not covered in your textbook, but it's an important strategy for you to know because quite often it is far easier for us to use this strategy than it is to be able to find um, the outcome using the addition rule or pr product rule. So what we're going to do with the complement rule is simply to find the number of ways in which a condition isn't true or our condition is not met and simply subtract that from the total sample space. And that's going to give us exactly what we're looking for, all of the ways that a condition can be true. So for instance, if I'm looking back at my student ID problem, the same student ID problem that I've been dealing with, and the question now says, I want to know how many student IDs have had some repetition. Now, if I did not use the complement rule in solving this, I would have to figure out how many ways can I have a repetition of say two letters? And remember that would mean I could have these two the same and this one different. So same, same. I could have these two the same and this one different, or I could have these two the same and this one different. Or I could have three letters the same. Or I could have two numbers the same. Or I could have two letters and two numbers. Or I could have three letters and two numbers. So you get the idea, going through and finding all of those different ways would be a real pain in the butt. But instead, let's think about doing this in a very smart way, in a much simpler way. If I'm trying to figure out how many student IDs have some repetition, some repetition, it's going to be easier for me to determine how many IDs have no repetition and take that away from the total sample space. Now, here's the good news. We actually already know the sample space and we already know how many have no repeats. So assuming that you're joining me from video 6.1.1, where we solved these, we found that the sample space, and this is when we have no restrictions, remember is made up of three capital letters. So that's 26 times 26 times 26, or 26 to the third, followed by two digits. So times 10 squared. That's the sample space. That's all of the different options that I can have for an ID. With no repeats, we said, okay, if the first one has 26 letters, the second one has 25 letters because we've already used a letter in our first position. The third position has 24 options to choose from because we've already used two letters, one in the first and one in the second position. For digits, I have 10 options for my first digit, but I only have nine for my second because I can't repeat whatever happened here. So again, using what we already know, where this first guy was 1,757,600 and the second one was 1,404,000, I can simply subtract those two and end up with 353,600. So again, far easier to do it that way than to do all of this work. Let's look at a question now where we actually get to use all three of the rules that we have learned, which is the rule of sum, the rule of product, and the complement rule. So in this question, we say that each user on a computer system has a password, which is six to eight characters long. Each character is an uppercase letter or a digit, each password must contain at least one digit. So three things going on here. We've got a password, which is six to eight digits. We've got each character is an uppercase letter or a digit. And we have our very big restriction must contain at least one digit. So six to eight characters long, 
means I could have six or seven or eight characters. Now again, whenever we see that word or, that should tell us to add. So if I'm trying to find the number of passwords, I'm going to take the number of ways I can have a six character password, plus the number of ways a seven character password and an eight character password. So now let's look at P6. P6 is six characters, one, two, three, four, five, six. What could I have on my first character? Well, if it's an uppercase letter or a digit, there are 26 uppercase letters, or indicates to add 10 digits, that's 36 characters. That can be any of the 36 characters from my first digit or first character, and any of them for the second, and any for the third, and any for the fourth, and any for the fifth, and any for the sixth. So really, it's just 36 to the sixth. And similarly, P7 would be 36 to the seventh, and P8 would be 36 to the eighth. So now let's look at, that of course was using the product rule. So we've used the rule of sum and we've used the rule of product. What are we gonna do about that part in red? Well, we have must contain at least one digit. So whenever you see at least something, that's always the complement of one less than that. So in this case, at least one is the complement of none. Well, what's the complement of none? None means there are no digits. And no digits is just another way of saying they're all letters. Well, that just got real easy real fast. Remember the complement rule says you take the sample space, that's this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and you subtract from it, obviously the complement, so all letters, 26 letters, would be 26 to the sixth. And, uh, sorry, six letters <laughs> would be 26 to the sixth, seven letters would be 26 to the seventh, and eight letters would be 26 to the eighth. So what is my total? It's 36 to the sixth minus 26 to the sixth, and don't you dare call that 10 to the sixth, plus 36 to the seventh minus 26 to the seventh, plus 36 to the eighth minus 26 to the eighth. So this is great. And in fact, if you would like, you can re leave your answer just like that. Because honestly, trying to actually work that out gets real crazy. It's like 2,680,000,000, no, let's see, million, billion. Yeah, 684 billion, 483 million, 63,360. Or just give me this answer just like this. Here's a great question, multi-part question, for you to try on your own, and I really encourage you to do that. A lot of students don't press pause and don't go through the questions on their own, and you're really kind of missing out on a learning opportunity because it always seems so simple when the teacher goes through a question and you say, well, of course that's the answer, but when you've tried it yourself, you maybe haven't thought everything through, and that's kind of the point of these questions is for you to have that chance to struggle with the material a little bit in a safe space where you're still going to end up with the, the correct solution at the end. So if you would, press pause, try these questions. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. Again, we are dealing with the same kind of problem we've been dealing with, and in this case, we're dealing only with digits. Now, only with digits is a little bit easier because we know digits include the numbers zero through nine, which means there are 10 options. Now the only restriction here, the only thing we have to be careful of is that we don't want leading zeros. So they're saying 
you can't have a zero first, so it can't be, and this is six values, so one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy cannot be a zero, and that's the only restriction, which means as I'm working through this first one, digits may be repeated. Well, the first guy, there's only nine options because I can use one or two or three or four or five all the way through nine, but I cannot use zero. For the other values, there are no restrictions. Digits can be repeated. So each of these can be 10, 10 different options. It can have all zeros after the first digit or all ones or all twos, etc. The only restriction in this case is that that first value cannot be a zero. So this answer is nine times 10 to the fifth or 900,000. Let's look at the next one. No digit may be repeated. So again, we're dealing with six digits. The first one still has nine options because it can be anything except for zero. And the tricky part on this one is that the second one can also be nine options because it can be anything except for whatever we used here, including zero. It could be a zero or it could be a one or two all the way through 10, but it can't be whatever we used first. And then from there, it's pretty straightforward. Two digits have been used, so there's eight left. Three have been used, so there's seven left, and so on and so forth. And that turns into 136,080. Let's ramp it up a little bit more. No digit may be repeated, and it's an even number. Well, even numbers, as we know, end in zero or two or four or six or eight. Now, why is that important? Because the zero is a little bit tricky on this one. So this one is actually going to use the rule of sum. We're going to have two different ways that this could happen. On this one, this is if it ends in a zero. Oops. So if it ends in a zero, then there's only one option there, which means there's nine options here. Again, every value except for zero. So no digit may be repeated means now there are eight options and seven and six and five. Now, why did this one have nine and nine and this one have nine then eight? What's the difference? Well, here I had to account for the fact that zero could be included in those values. Here, zero can't be included because zero is happening down here. And then if it ends in a two, four, six, or eight, then that's four options. Four options for my last value. This guy, uh, this first one, can't be zero. And also, it can't be whatever happens down here. So there's actually only eight options. And then for this one, there are eight options. Why? Because it can be anything except for whatever we used here and whatever we used here, but it can be zero. So that we kind of added the zero back in. So it's eight times eight and then the rest of them seven times six times five, and then we always obviously had four at the end. So then we're going to add those together, which is 68,800. All right, coming up next, digits may be repeated, even number. So if digits may be repeated an even number, this guy is going to be nine because it cannot end, it cannot begin in a zero. This one can be any value. 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 And this one has to end in a zero, two, four, six, or eight. So nine times 10 to the fourth times five, which is 45, or sorry, 450 thousand. 
No digit may be repeated, divisible by five. So again, this one is gonna get a little tricky because we have to kind of set it up like this, no digit repeated, and either ending in a zero or a five because numbers divisible by five end in zero or five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if it ends in a zero or if it ends in a five, if it ends in a zero, I'm going to start with nine options here, which is anything except for zero, and then eight, and then seven, and then six, and then five, and this guy is a zero. The divisible by five but ends in five is just a little bit different because there are eight options here, which means it can't be zero and it can't be a five, but there's also eight options here because it can't be a five and it can't be whatever happened here, but it could be a zero. So again, we've got eight times eight times seven times six times five. And then total, when I add those two products together, 28,560. And lastly, no digit repeated divisible by four. This one's actually real difficult because, and you'd have to know the division rule for divisible by four. So for a value to be divisible by four, the last two digits are divisible by four. So again, we sort of have to differentiate between the zeros and the not zeros. So if it, the last two have to be divisible by four. That could be 0, 4, 0, 8, 20, 40, 60, or 80. And my pen is gonna stop working, which is fantastic. Okay, 20, 40, 60, or 80. Um, in that group, We've got eight times seven times six times five. And then the last two digits, there are one, two, three, four, five, six options. So again, eight, let's start with going back to here. Why did we start with eight? Well, there are two digits here so there's eight left over. So there's eight left over that I can use here and then seven and then six and then five. Now, if it's divisible by four, but it doesn't include a zero, that's 12, 16, 24, 28, so on and so on and so on. There's 16 options there. I'll let you figure out the rest of those. So again, how's that gonna work? Well, this first guy can't be a zero but it also can't be any of the 16 options that I've used here, which includes two digits. So there's only seven ways that I can choose my first value, but there's also seven ways I can choose my second value because this one can be a zero, and then six times five. And so I'm going to end up with a total of 33,600. So again, some of these were a little bit tougher than others, but that's the kind of the point is, like I told you at the beginning, these seem like simple concepts, but putting them all together can be more complicated. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the subtraction rule and the division rule. And the subtraction rule is really just the principle of inclusion exclusion for two sets. Um, and we'll study the principle of inclusion exclusion in much more detail.